presentation. First of all, I'd like to thank Professor Seyfaridi for all his support and help in these years. Actually, he was not, not only uh, my supervisor in these years, he, he was mostly like a kind father for me in this year. I should mention that without his support and help, it was not possible for me to finish my master, and now I'm defending my PhD. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and I would like also to thank Jim, Dr. Jim Dowling, my second advisor. Uh, he really helped me in each step of my work, and I really learned from him. Thank you. OK, so the title of my work is Live Streaming in Peer-to-Peer -peer and Hybrid Peer-to-Peer -peer Cloud Environments for the Open Internet. OK, the structure of my presentation is as the following. First of all, uh, I have a very short introduction about the whole concept. Then I divide the rest of the time into three parts. And in each part, I talk about the main my main contribution, contribution one, two, and three. And then finally, I wrap up the presentation. And in each contribution, first of all, I explain the problem. And then I present my solution. So the whole actually work that I've done is around the term media streaming. So let's first of all define it. Media streaming is a multimedia which is sent over a network and play as it is being received by end users. It means that uh, the users uh, can watch or listen to the media while the media is downloading. So they don't need to wait for the media to be downloaded. So it could be live, like people live, or it could be on demand, like Netflix or Spotify or something like this. And the traditional model for the providing media streaming is a client server. So in the client server, we have a server farm in one side, that all the resources are here, and the rest of the nodes are the other side. If you want to receive a media or content, you should connect to the server. It's a fine, it's a very good model, but it's very costly. In my mind, this model is like capitalism. In the capitalism, all the resources are on one side, and the rest are the other side. So if you have money, that's the best choice. But an alternative to the capitalism is socialism. So in the socialism, <laughs> in the socialism <laughs> model, actually, the resources are distributed over the nodes. So each node can play both as a server and, a, and a, as a client. So for example, this node, while receiving the content from the server, it also provide the data to the others. OK, so we are going to use peer-to-peer -peer for media streaming. But our goal is not to use peer-to-peer -peer for licensing. Our goal is to provide a high quality. So what is the quality of service in, in the media stream? We define it into two terms. First of all, we would like to have a high playback continuity. We would like to have a very a smooth playback. And also, we would like to have a short playback latency. It makes sense only for live streaming. And by the playback latency, it means that the difference between the time that you are watching the video or listening to the audio compared to neighbors and to the source. For example, assume you are watching a football match, but you don't like to hear that your neighbor is celebrating a goal before you see the goal. So we would like to have a very short latency. OK. But using peer-to-peer -peer architecture to achieve that quality of service is not easy. Actually, a number of challenges are ahead. First of all, the system are very dynamic. We have churn in the system. Nodes join and leave the system at any time. We may have free riders. So I said so, uh, nodes are sharing their resources, but it happened that a node joins the system but doesn't share its resources and use other nodes' resources. And the third uh, challenge is the bottleneck in the overlay. What happens if the amount of resources that are provided by the users are less than the actually resources that you need? What should we do? And finally, the connectivity problem for the, uh, it means what happens if we have uh, NAT in the system? So as Anvita mentioned, we cannot initiate connection to the nodes behind NAT. OK. So, these challenges actually made my main contributions. As I said, I have three contributions. I proposed and actually designed and implemented a number of algorithms and systems to answer these questions. I presented 
uh, Sepidar and July in the thesis that answer to these questions. And later, I presented Clive, which is a system to answer the bottleneck in the overlay. And also Gozar and Krupier, two other systems to answer the connectivity problem. Fine? So now I'm going to go through the first contribution. So Sepidar and July, as I wrote, is a peer-to-peer -peer solution for live streaming. In this presentation, I only present Sepidar. GLI is also somehow similar to Sepidar, but Sepidar is easier to present. OK, as I said, first I explain the problem, and then later I talk about the solution. OK, we would like to have uh, to build a peer-to-peer -peer overlay for live streaming with a high quality of service. Assume this is the overlay that we have. Each dot is a node or user in the system. We have a source. And in this overlay, in this network, each node can receive data from a, number of, a bounded number of nodes and also can provide data to a bounded number of nodes. We showed this number of actually connections that a node can receive and provide by the download slot and upload slot. For example, I zoom into this node, and this node can receive data from two nodes and also provide data to three other nodes. OK, we assume we split the stream into a number of substreams. For example, this is, assume this is the media stream that is generated by the source. And we divide it into two substreams, for example, blue substream and red substream. OK, to have a high quality at the nodes, OK, before saying about this, I have a number of assumptions. The first assumption here is that we don't have bottleneck in the system. It means that the number of upload bandwidths in the system are enough. So we can provide data to all the nodes. And also, we assume that all the nodes have enough download bandwidth to download the media, the whole media. OK? So by considering this assumption, to provide a high, the full quality at all the nodes, we would like to create a complete assignment. And by complete assignment, it means that all, do all the download slots in a node, for example, these two download slots, connected to upload slot of other nodes, and also they download distinct substream. For example, here I split the media into blue and red substream. So this node should uh, receive red substream from one of it, its download slot and the blue substream from another one. OK? In this uh, relation, if we create this kind of connections, we call this node that receives the data the child node, and the node who provides the data the parent node. OK, so I assign a cost to each connection to well define a connection. And I show the cost by CIJK. What does it mean? It means the cost for connecting download slot i to upload a slot j for substream k. OK, so for example, this node has, a two, has two parents for receiving substream red and blue. And the cost function, the cost of this connection in the red one is what? And I define the cost as a distance of a node to the source. The cost of this connection is 1, 2, 3, 4. And the cost of this connection is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK? So the question in here is that by uh, assigning cost to the connection, it makes sense that if I reduce the cost of each connection, I can provide a better quality. Why? Because as I said, the cost is the distance to the source. If I reduce the cost, it means that I reduce the distance of the nodes to the source. So it means that I have a, um, sh um, a smaller latency. But how can I do that? How can I create an overlay that the average latency or the average cost over the nodes are minimum? We can look at this problem as an optimization problem. Each optimization problem has an objective function and also a number of constraints. Our objective function, as I mentioned, we would like to find a complete assignment that minimizes the total cost. So if we assume the sum of all the costs in the network, we would like to minimize this function 
what are our restrict, uh, actual restrictions? First of all, we would like that each download slot is assigned to exactly what upload, one upload slot. Each download slot connect to one upload slot. Each upload slot is assigned to at most one download slot. So since we assume that the number of upload slots in the system are more than the number of download slots, it may happen that some of the upload slots are not assigned. So each upload slot should be assigned at most to one download slot. And also, different download slots should download this thing, substring. So if this download slot is downloading red substring, the other one should download blue substring. So that, that's the problem. We can solve this problem in a centralized manner. Actually, it's very easy to solve this problem if you consider a central server in the system. So we can assume that there is a server with a global knowledge in the system, and that server using a huge number of solutions to solve that kind of problem. And we can solve the problem by assigning different download slots to upload slot. This solution is good, but possible for a small system size. What should we do if we have a large number of nodes in the system? So that's what we propose in our thesis. The assumption here, we don't have any global knowledge. So each node doesn't have a global knowledge. So our proposed solution is kind of distributed market solution, which is inspired by auction algorithm. That's a problem. So let's see what's the solution. The solution is as the following. OK, before I present the solution, I need to say something in parentheses about designing uh, and constructing uh, an overlay, talk about the design space. When we are talking about uh, an overlay, we can assume three dimensions how to create and construct the overlay. The first dimension is that what overlay topology should be built for data destination? It could be tree. For example, we make a tree for data destination. The source broadcasts the data, and all the nodes in the path uh, can receive the data. This, this, this model is very good, but it's very fragile. If we have churn, since we have only three, it's very fragile. If one of the nodes in the actually in, uh, node fails, so any nodes on the actually subtree at the root of that node don't receive the data. Two other solutions are multiple tree or mesh. So in this model, we split the data into a number of substring, and each node receives different substring from different nodes or we can create a mesh. OK, after uh, designing, after deciding about the overlay topology, the question is, the other question is that, what algorithm should be used for data, data decimation? It can be push, it can be pull, or it can be push. -pull. I'm not going to explain them, but I'm just mm, actually talking about this dimension <laughs> to show where the Sepidor and GLive are located. And the last uh, dimension is how to construct the overlay. It could be uh, centralized. It could be based on DHT, or could be based on the gossip base. Sepidor, if we consider these three dimension, uses multiple tree for overlay topology. It uses push model for the data dissemination. And it uses a gossip based model for constructing the overlay. And GLive uses mesh. For data, for actually overlay topology, it uses pool for data dissemination and using gossiping for constructing the data. Okay, I am going to talk about CPDR. GLive is somehow similar to CPDR. Okay, let's see how I build the overlay. So I would like, I repeat the question again, I would like to create a complete assignment that minimizes the cost. And as I said, we don't have global knowledge. Each node has a only partial view or a small uh, knowledge about all the nodes in the system. So I, I, as a node in the system, knows only my neighbors. OK, how can I reduce the cost in the system? One simple solution could be by putting the nodes with a higher number of uploads so closer to the source, I can create, I can reduce uh, the cost. Why? Because if the nodes with a higher number of uploads are located closer to the source, they can support more nodes, 
and therefore the depth of the tree are uh, actually uh, reduced. So, but how can I do that without having a global notch? How can I put the nodes with a higher up bandwidth closer to the source? So, we use a kind of auction algorithm to do that. Assume I put the overlay here. This is a node that has a number of parents. And these actually orange nodes are the partial view that this node ha uh, has about the whole network. And this node, how um, we would like that each node find a better parent for himself or herself. For example, this node periodically checks among its candidate parents to see if it can find a node better than its existing parent. What is the meaning of better? Better means closer to the source. If I find some nodes uh, uh, in my partial view, which is closer to source than my current parent, I send my bit to that node. And I used my number of upload slots as my mind. So if I have more number of uh, slots, it means I have more money. So the probability that I can win in the bidding is increasing. And how does this parent node decide about if I accept a bid or not? Mm -hmm. So it's very easy. The parent node accepts the highest bid. For example, assume this node receives a number of bids from different nodes. It just easily accepts the highest bid. That's a, a general idea in this solution. OK, but there are two questions here. First question is that, how should I create this partial view? I said that each node knows only a few number of nodes in the system. How can I create this partial view for each node? And the second question, how can I handle the free writing? OK, one possible solution to create a partial view is just mm, select a few random nodes from the nodes. OK, like here, for example, this node knows a, num no, uh, knows a number of nodes in the system. In this uh, figure, the darker nodes are the higher upload bandwidth they have. Okay, so for example, this node, as you see, uh, has two low number of nodes, uh, number of upload um, slots in his neighbors. So, what does it, uh, what's the problem of this model? The problem is that, as I said, we like to put the nodes with higher upload bandwidth closer to this, but it doesn't make sense that. This node, which has a higher number of upload slots, chooses this node, which, is, which has lower number of upload slots as its parent. Okay, so to limit the actually exploration from this random set, the better solution is use the gradient overlay. By using the gradient overlay, actually we and then the partial view of each node is the nodes with a similar upload bandwidth or a bit higher. So. With this, by choosing this model, we reduce the number of parent switching. So it, co it helps to convert uh, t uh, the overlay faster. OK, that's the first question, how I, uh, I make the partial view. And the second question is that, how I can prevent the free riding? Free, uh, I repeat the definition of the free riders. Free riders are the nodes that join the system, but they supply less uh, resources that they Claim. Okay, how we can solve this is as following. Assume we have created a parent child relation. When we create this kind of uh, relation, <coughs> the child introduces its, uh, its child to the parent. And the parent periodically asks its grandchildren about their parents. Okay, and okay, if this parent uh, didn't send any data to this child, the, ch the child reports the property of and uh, the quality of uh, data that they received from their parents to their grandparent. So after a while, if this parent detects that the child doesn't provide the data as it is promised, so it detects this node as a free rider. Later, as a punishment, later whenever it receives a bit from other nodes, and if it doesn't have any free space, it just kick out the free riders and accept any other nodes, regardless of how much money they have. Okay? So 
Here I just show a, a snapshot of the how sepidar looks like. So it just for 20 nodes and shows that without using a global knowledge and by actually just deciding locally, we see that we end up with this kind of a structure that the nodes who have higher upload band, uh, as I said, the darker nodes have higher number of upload bands. We end up with this architecture that the nodes with higher upload bands are closer to the source than the others. So, uh, unfortunately, unlike what I claim in the beginning, I claim that in the peer-to-peer -peer system, all nodes are the same. It's true, all nodes are the same, but some, all nodes are equal, but some nodes are more equal. <laughs> Actually, based on what claimed by George Orwell in Animals Farm. So, if you have more money, you, be, you get better service, <coughs> right? Okay, to summarize the first contribution, I talk about CPDAR and also GLive, which are peer-to-peer -peer overheads for live streaming. We propose a distributed market mode based on uh, action algorithm to construct the streaming overlay. We use the gradient overlay to speed up the overlay construction. And finally, we use the transit auditing to detect free writers. Okay, let's go to the second contribution. As I said, in the first uh, part, I mentioned that we assume we have enough resources in the system. We, there is no bottleneck in the system. But what should we do if there is some bottleneck in the system? Okay, there is a bottleneck in the system. One potential solution is to use cloud resources. But how? Cloud resources are very actually good, but the problem is that they are not free. On the other hand, we would like to have a combination, a hybrid model of peer-to-peer and cloud to provide to this kind of service. So let's have a very short view of the advantage and disadvantage of peer-to-peer -peer and cloud. Peer-to-peer -peer resources are cheap relatively to the cloud. Since users share their resources, it's cheaper. Uh, but the problem is that the availability may be, and we cannot promise about the availability because the chair may compromise the availability. Right? On the other hand, cloud can provide a high availability for us, but they are not free. So what should we do? So I am a guy in the com in the peer-to-peer -peer community. So I know I cannot beat cloud. So let's restrain them. How? So we can use cloud as a supporting group for my system. But as I said, since it is costly, I try to reduce the number of interaction with the cloud as much as possible. So that was the problem. Let's see how we can solve this problem. As a baseline solution, we assume a model like this. Assume this is the peer-to-peer overlay for media stream. Assume this is CPDR, GLive, or any other systems. Okay. One possible solution, which I introduced as a baseline, is to rent passive resources from the cloud, like a storage. And the source pushes data to this and this is story which is rented from the cloud as soon as it's generated and also pushes the data to the um, overlay, peer-to-peer -peer overlay. So the nodes in this overlay, if they cannot receive the data from other nodes in their overlay, they don't wait for actually other nodes. Since uh, we want to provide a high quality service, 100% quality service, we don't wait for the other nodes. If I don't receive a node before a threshold, which is defined time, we go to the storage and pull it. We call the storage passive helper. Why passive helper? Because it doesn't have any computing power. So the nodes can communicate with the passive helper by just sending a request and receiving data. This node doesn't have any computing power. But what we propose in the Clive is to, actually we can rent two types of helpers from uh, the cloud. In addition to the passive helper, we can also rent active helper. Active helper, unlike passive helper, they have computing power and they can contribute in data 
dissemination. Okay? So the question is that the cost of active helper and passive helper are different. How we can provide a hybrid model and distribute the data between uh, uh, passive helper and active helper such that we minimize the cost and provide the data with the desired quality of service? OK, there are two main questions here. How we estimate the load? Okay. First of all, we need to understand how much resources we need to provide in the system. For example, we have 100 nodes in the system, but we can provide the current resources in the system are enough for 80 nodes. So how can we find uh, those 20 nodes? How can we understand that two, 20 nodes needs resources? And the second question is that, OK, we, we come up with the number of extra load, with the extra load that we need. How many active helpers should be added to the system that reduces the cost? OK, estimating the extra load is very simple. Actually, I'm not going to detail. I'm just uh, talking in a very high level. The load in the system is the swarm size. By the swarm size, is, I mean the overlay size minus the infected nodes. And infected nodes are the nodes who can receive data with the existing resources in the system. OK, this swarm size is very, actually, is very well known. And there is a well known solution for it. We can use just gussie based aggregation to estimate the swarm size. And for the infected nodes, it can be shown that each uh, data block which is generated at the source uh, travel a tree based diffusion pattern in the overlay, regardless of if the overlay is a mesh base or tree base, the pattern that it travels in the overlay is a tree base. Well, because no nodes receive a block twice. So since there is no cycle in the network, we can say uh, it, the pattern that it travels in the network is a tree. So how we can estimate the number of nodes in the tree? It's very simple. If we estimate the depth of the tree and the up and the fan out distribution, we can estimate the number of nodes in that tree. Again, we use Gaussian based aggregation for estimating the upload slide distribution tree. I'm not going to the details in this presentation, but they exist in the slide. Okay, we find out what is the extra load in the system. How, but how can we decide about? How many active helpers should be added in the system for that load? I said that the active helper and passive helper have different costs. OK. So in this plot, it shows the cost of active helper and passive helper in a round. In a round, so it, it's a period that actually I calculate the cost. OK. And whenever I add. Uh, active, uh, an active helper into the system, I consume all its uh, available resources. For example, if an active helper can provide data to 10 nodes, I'm using, I, I assume that when the active helper in the system, all 10 nodes are receiving data from that active helper. Okay? So, because of that, regardless of how many nodes in the system, since the active helper just sending data to a constant number of nodes, by increasing the number of the x-axis shows the number of pairs. Regardless of the number of nodes in the system, its cost is constant. Okay? But on the other hand, the cost of active uh, passive helper depends on the number of requests that we receive. So the more nodes in the system we have, the more requests the passive helper receives. So we find out, we find out uh, the, the situation from after, uh, from that point on, the cost of passive helper in, is more than the cost of active helper. So it, now we can decide how many active helpers should be added into the system. If the load is more than delta, we just add one active helper. If the load is less than delta minus R, H, we remove one active helper. And H is the number of nodes can be, uh, can get data from one active helper. If it means that if by removing one active helper from the system, I still 
can provide data as much as I want, then I can remove one active helper. Otherwise, I don't change the number of helpers in the system. That's the whole idea in the Clive. Just to summarize the uh, Clive, so Clive is a hybrid peer-to-peer -peer cloud uh, solution for live media streaming. It's a combination of active helpers and passive helpers to, to, to find out the number of active helpers in the system. We first of, first of all, we estimate the amount of extra load and then relate the extra load to the cloud and add remove active helpers to minimize the cost. Okay, let's go to the last and third and last contribution. So, th in this uh, actually contribution, we talk about peer sampling service. Peer sampling service is a kind of building block in many large distributed systems. And as I mentioned in the first part, uh, we use the peer sampling service to provide a partial view and a small number of nodes from the all nodes for each node. In this uh, actually part of my presentation, I'm going to talk about Gozar and Krupier, actually about Krupier. I'm not going to, to talk about Gozar, which is a not aware peer sampling service. So let me show you what's the problem and what's the idea behind peer sampling service. Okay, assume these are the nodes in the system. So, and each node has a partial view. By partial view, I mean that each node knows only a few number of nodes in the system. For example, this node, N11, knows N10, N8, N7, and N5. And also N5 knows N1, N6, N3, and N11. Okay? But we would like to update this, actually, partial view periodically. How we can do that? Each node, for example, N11, each node periodically chooses one of its neighbors. For example, N11 chooses N5 and sends part of its view to that node as a shuffle request. Whenever this node receives a shuffle request as a response, sends back part of its view, and then they could update their states and they have a new view with the new links. Actually, these links are new links. They remove the old links and have new links. Okay, that's a peer sampling service, but assume we have a net or firewall in the system. What happened? We call the node uh, behind that as a private node and the node after, uh, without NAT as a public node. But assume this node as a private node send a shuffle request to the public node, it receives and responds and respond and they could update their views. But if another node initiates a connection or sends a shuffle request to the private node, it cannot receive that. Why? Because the NAT or firewall doesn't let the data to pass, uh, to go through the firewall and receive by the node. That's a problem. What's the solution? Again, in the front, is I talk about the design and space of the peer sampling service. In general, when we are talking about peer sampling service, we can assume three dimensions in that. First of all, what uh, policy should we use for node selection? For example, uh, as I mentioned here, which I choose one node from my list to exchange my data. Which node should I choose? Should I choose randomly or choose the node among my uh, neighbors which, is, which has a actually, uh, which is older? After I choose a neighbor, how should I exchange my part of view? Should I just push the, my view to that or exchange my view? And after I receiving the view, how should I update my view? Should I just mix them and select number of them randomly? Or I select the actually youngest node or just replace the nodes that I sent to my neighbors with the nodes that I received? Okay. By considering these uh, policies, or these three dimensions, I can mention that Gozar is using tail policy for node selection, uses push-pull for view propagation, and using swapper policy for view selection. But it works in the NATED network. So, but for 
doing peer sampling, it uses one hop peer sampling, one hop uh, node for exchange data. I'm not going to talk about Gozer. And it also has a built in net traversal. On the other hand, crew peer, similar to Gozer, uses the same policies for peer sampling. But the nice thing about crew peer is that it can provide peer sampling without relaying. But it does have a built in net traversal, but it, we can add a net traversal to it. So let's see how we can, how we can, how crew peer provides peer sampling and how we can provide net traversal. So as I said, we have two type of nodes in the system, private and public. And since the node, since nodes cannot uh, initiate connection with the private node, they only, they only initiate connection with the public nodes. And the public nodes, as a group here, on behalf of private nodes, update their views. But what's the problem? One of the properties by using peer sampling services that we would like to have a uniform sample of all the nodes in our view. If we only initiate connection with the public nodes, then we bias our view such that the number of public nodes in our view are more than the private nodes. So how we can handle that? So unlike the traditional, actually, peer sampling service like Cyclone, instead of having one view, we have two views one for public view and one for private view. And regardless of how many nodes in the system, we update both of them. But the question is that we would like to have a uniform random sample among all the nodes, but we have two views. How we can end up with one view which shows the uh, ra uniform random sample of the nodes. For example, how we can choose x person and y person from these two nodes. The answer is that if we find the ratio of the public to private nodes locally without using global knowledge, then we can understand how many, how percentage of the nodes are should be chosen from this view and how percentage of the nodes should be chosen from this view. For example, in this figure, we have 20 nodes, eight red nodes and 12 green nodes. So 60% of nodes should be selected from this one and 40% should be selected from this one. Okay. But how we can estimate the ratio of public to private nodes? In pu public nodes, in each round, so since I receive a number of shuffle requests, I count the number of requests that I receive from public nodes and private nodes. Okay? And I keep a history of them. After a while, for example, I, I understand after 10 seconds, I receive, for example, uh, 20 requests from public nodes and 80 requests from private nodes, something like that. And also, I keep track of gamma recent received estimation from public nodes. Because each public also estimate data, they send their estimation to the public node. Using these two data, the public node can estimate the ratio of the public nodes to the private nodes. And on the other hand, private nodes, since they don't receive any actually shuffle requests, they cannot count the number of shuffle request. But they receive, uh, when they send a shuffle request to the uh, public node, as a response, the public node sends back its estimation of the ratio. And by keeping a history of those estimation from public nodes, the private nodes also can estimate the ratio. OK. Using something like this, we can estimate the public to private node ratio. But group here can be also, we can add a net traversal to the group here to provide a distributed net traversal. I just mentioned the idea. How we can do that? Each private node choose one of or a number of public nodes from its public view as its partners, as its parents. And when they shuffle with other nodes, in addition to its address, it also introduces its NAT type and its parent address. Later, if another node is going to initiate the connection to the private node, what it does, it sends the data through the parent node. So the parent node could be used as a relay node or random node. OK, just to summarize the uh, Gozar and Krupier, Gozar is one-hop relay, and Krupier is a 
PSS without prelim. In the group here, public nodes behave as a group here, and on behalf of net, uh, private nodes update their views. We assume we have two views at each node, public and private views. To find a single view, we need to ratio, we need to find the ratio of the public nodes to the private nodes, and we use partnering private nodes with the public nodes for net traversal. Okay, done. Just to wrap up uh, the presentation, in this uh, presentation, I talk about three contributions. First of all, I talk about Cepedar and July, which are peer-to-peer -peer solution for live streaming that we use distributed market model for maintaining and constructing the overlay. We use the gradient over to speed up the overlay construction. And we use transitive auditing to resolve the free riding problem. To overcome the uh, bottleneck in the system, we propose a hybrid peer-to-peer -peer cloud by renting active helper and passive helper from the cloud. And to solve the net uh, problem and connected problem, we propose Gozar and Croupier, which are not, uh, not every peer sampling service with what one hub relay in Gozar and without relay in peer sampling service. Also, we mentioned that how we, by using partner we can provide distributed net towers. As a future work, we should solve the collusion attack. So, collusion attack means that a group of nodes work together, cooperate together to cheat. In the transit auditing that we propose, if, the, if a node with its children work together and lie about uh, their parents, so they can attack the system. <coughs> so we didn't solve this problem. So solving the collusion, I think, is kind of our future work. And also, we propose a number of algorithms and systems. As a future work, we should put all these components together, they are like puzzle. We can connect them together and build a real system. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.